Ignore Chris. Okay, Mary Lee, um, what is LEAN? LEAN is a statewide environmental organization, the only statewide environmental organization in Louisiana. We're a coalition of groups and of individuals. Okay. And how long has LEAN been around? We're in our fifth year. We're proud to say we're in our fifth year here. Okay. And who came up with LEAN? Uh, collectively, we all did. We had a seminar out at LSU around five years ago where leaders came together from various parishes. And at the end of the two and a half days, we didn't want that feeling of camaraderie, um, the strength that we knew could come from unity, uh, to end. So we made the commitment uh, on Sunday out at LSU to say um, we want to form a statewide organization and find out what's happening to our neighbors and to go across the borders of parishes and extend our hands. Okay, so Lean is throughout Louisiana. It certainly is. You know, let me turn this phone off. I think that'd be a good idea. Because sure, <laughs> somebody else again, I'll have ringing phones through the entire thing. Okay, there we go. So Lean is throughout Louisiana then? Correct, right. Heavily in the more southern part of Louisiana because unfortunately that seems to be where a lot of the difficulties or problems are and people are more aware. And, uh, but we're trying to strengthen our ties up in northern Louisiana. Okay, and your title? Executive Director of Lean. Okay. And is this the main branch of Lean in Louisiana? That's a wonderful way to put it. It's our only branch, is but it? we are hopeful that one day we will be both in the north and the south of Louisiana. We do extend through our field organizer. Our research also does some organizing. So um, while we're based here, we extend out and travel to uh, various parts of the state. Okay. And um, on a daily basis, what's a daily routine for you? What What is you're calling. When you get a call, say from, you know, somebody in a parish that says, my child can't breathe or, you know, something like that, what, what do you do? Well, first of all, there is no daily routine with this job because it is a, a reactive job sometimes because we do service people and they call in with the problem. Depending on what it is, often we network them with someone else who has a similar problem, a similar state. If it's something critical, uh, perhaps like yesterday when there was an explosion, whether or not they should button up or leave, then we sort of have to go with our instincts. But um, because we are multi-issued and a service organization, um, it just varies day to day. Okay. One thing I might want to tell you, can we either stop it or whatever, I was the first chair, Fran, of, of Lean. Okay. So I went from chair to director. From I call myself an empowered housewife. Okay. <laughs> yeah, All right. Which I truly am, an yeah. empowered housewife. You know, mother of two small children and my... Okay. We can elab we don't have to elaborate on that, but you no, need to know history. Yeah, you should know where I've come from. To, yeah. I was going to ask you, um, how did you find Lane as your link in life? Well, first of all, I guess you'd have we have to talk about how I found the movement. I found the movement because my second son was born with highland membrane disease. And I often say, if you've ever seen someone lose the ability to breathe, you'd never take it for granted again. Five months after that, my father was on and off of a ventilator and just made me realize how precious it is the gift of being able to breathe easily. And then I realized I was in a city where we had non-attainment, continually non-attainment, brought home a small baby who was more susceptible to respiratory problems. And I finally decided that I had to stop being an armchair quarterback and get involved. So I got involved and I formed a group called Mothers Against Air Pollution, joined with my other local group here called Citizens for a Clean Environment. Um, through Citizens for a Clean Environment, we helped with this statewide uh, conference and that was about a year after I'd been involved in the movement. And then we had that at LSU, and then Lean, Lean was born. Came Lean was born. That's we have a birthday great. every year, as a matter of fact. So that is we're really excited. Neat. Well, I'd like to be invited next time. Please really come. Like we have cake and lots of fun. Well, that's neat. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about maybe Lean's successes. Um, we've had a lot. Um, it's difficult work, though. It's uh, sort of like that song, Two Steps Forward, Two Steps Back, <laughs> as Paul Abdul very adequately puts it. But uh, recently, we've had some tremendous successes in the legislature, and we feel it's a sign of how unified people have come and how much better we are at getting our voice not known. September the 1st, the water regulations for DEQ were passed unanimously out of the Joint House uh, Senate Committee. And we feel it's because groups that had never worked before had come together. We had the commercial fishermen, seafood processors, a physician, a black tenants organization, an attorney, a mother of a child who had neuroblastoma or rare brain cancer. And for me as a mother, her witness or her testimony was the most powerful of all. Between 48 and 50 percent of the children that are at St. Jude's come from Louisiana. So this mother begged these legislators to listen to the cries of the children who wouldn't, weren't there 
and to err on the side of the people and to regulate more closely the toxics into our water. We are number one, or we're number one as of September in the discharge of toxics into our waterways here. And that also has an economic factor, which we talk. Everybody wants to talk more about the economic impact than they do their health. And so we brought both of those factors to the legislators, and luckily they were receptive and were very, very grateful. So that's one of our stories. We feel that uh, it's a combination of a lot of hard work. <laughs> okay. And now, speaking with the waterways, what else is Baton Rouge just, I mean, horrible at? because I come from a city that we really don't have to worry about the big industries letting out these toxins. We have other forms that are, you know, tearing up our environment. But what are other things that Louisiana is not very good at? Well, unfortunately, we heavily burdened in every way. We're a critical state, and I think I'm hopeful that that's why we will make a great deal of progress, more than other people who are more apathetic who don't realize they have the problems. I think we're becoming very aware that we are in the top three in all the toxic discharges into our air, land, and water. I think those of us who stop and think about it, um, it's sort of a common sense issue. You know, if you're putting carcinogens on a daily basis into your air, land, and water, what are you going to get back? So uh, we feel it needs to be stopped. And there are other states that have a good economy, have good environmental laws that are enforced, and, you know, they do wonderfully. Okay. And what have, what have been maybe not some of your fail failures, but some of your difficult situations here in Louisiana? Many difficult situations. It's a challenge. When I first started, if you want to talk about the beginning of the movement for me, which was about six years ago, so I'm sort of a new kid because there's been folks been in it for 17 years. When I first went down to the legislature, uh, many of the uh, legislators put their feet on the desk, they drank coffee, they didn't listen to these impassioned pleas of people who had traveled from all over the United States about issues that were affecting their health. I was just horrified. You know, I think everyone ought to send, spend one day down at the state capitol. It ought to be maybe a, a prerequisite of deciding <laughs> whether we can vote to know really if they're representing this because uh, I think the legislators do get complacent because they're only hearing one side of the story. So that was frustrating. It's frustrating for our people who find out that the government is not protecting them. They're not being protected. Um, it's a very disillusioning to think here in America that companies are allowed to um, dump these toxins in their neighborhood. They feel they're having tremendous health effects from it. They try to go through the channels, and they, and they don't get any response. And that's why we feel it's imperative to have citizen action organizations such as ourselves, protests and rallies and marches, and all those things that were very foreign to me six years ago, I realize are very important. You know all the great things that have happened, the wall, and all these, these movements that come around haven't really come through our laws. They've come through the voice of the people exactly. who just get out on the street and say enough is enough. And I think that movement is growing in Louisiana, and we're picking up people that before weren't involved. We're really lean as multifaceted, many different types of people from all talk, walks of life, and I think that makes it exciting. Okay. Now, if you could just grab every person, if you had the attention of the entire state of Louisiana for, wow. say, just a couple of minutes, what would be your advice to them? What a difficult question. Uh, to be alert and to be aware. Um, I'd probably give them some data because people really relate to scientific facts. They think environmentalists are over-emotional. Um, so we do have a lot of statistics, and they speak for themselves, but I'd want to give them a sense of hope that it's not hopeless that they can win, that we can take back our air, land, and water. We can clean it up, but it is critical. At the same time, I need to leave the message to them that they need to be involved, that they have something that no one else can give or do, and we need that gift. We need that gift here in Louisiana and the commitment to make it a great state. It is a beautiful state. It's wonderful people. Um, we used to talk about dreams, you know, a dream state. Well, we used to talk about let's quit dreaming about being a dream state and let's do something about it. Okay. Okay, Mary Lee. That, that was great. Yeah. Thanks. That was drafting. Lean, Louisiana Environmental Action Network. You've heard about it. It's been in the news, and it's even been on the steps of our capital with their infamous Styrofoam Man. Lane's executive director, Mary Lee Orr, explains just how Lane was born. Collectively, we all did. We had a seminar out at LSU around five years ago where leaders came together from various parishes. And at the end of the two and a half days, 
we didn't want that feeling of camaraderie, um, the strength that we knew could come from unity uh, to end. So we made the commitment uh, on Sunday out at LSU to say um, we want to form a statewide organization and find out what's happening to our neighbors and to go across the borders of parishes and extend their The mission of the network, says Orr, is to help people help themselves in dealing with their local dump, abandoned waste site, industrial air polluter, and many others. Lane's advice to all members of Louisiana, both young and old, uh, to be alert and to be aware. Um, I probably give them some data because people really relate to scientific facts. They think environmentalists are over emotional. Um, so we do have a lot of statistics and they speak for themselves, but I'd want to give them a sense of hope. One of Lane's many mottos says, because clean air, clean water, and clean land are matters of survival, the time is now. Lean just wants everyone to be aware. With photographer Christine Bellius, I'm Fran Lauder reporting for LSU TV.